really want to ask them about the horrors I encountered on my way here. I, I really want to. Maybe I should be asking Lamash to those questions, though. Something tells me that Laha doesn't have all the answers I want. And neither may Lamash do. Ludwig's Journal 3 of 4. I'm going to collect the journals. Then I'm going to read them in order. At least we know how many we're looking for now. So I can't see any more here. Let's try the master bedroom and the major's study. Right. Let's have a closer look at the master bedroom. Is there supposed to be... Ah! I really did miss out the first time. Ludwig's Journal 1 of 4. I'll take it. Are there any more journals in here? Ooh, the real Baron Zaya, Volume 5. That's on the list for Orion. I kind of want to take all the other books I'm seeing. However, let's prioritize right now. Don't know how long it's going to be until we can offload some of this junk. Right. Okay, we're going to go try find a major study. I don't think there's going to be any more in here. Uh -huh. Is that... Oh, there you are. Are oh, you doing some repairs, are you? What is... Castle workroom. Corrosive vapor warning. The workroom is closed until the corrosive vapors within can be purged. The exhaust fans are currently non-functional due to the breaches in the steam pipeline. Right, that makes sense. I think. Mage's study. I'm going to assume a study would be upstairs. It really is a very particular style. I can't say it's for me. Mage's study. Here we are. It's just very garish. Where or where does that lead? I guess we'll find out soon. Let's check down here first. The Wolf Queen, Volume 7. Corrosive Vapor Warning again. Oh, this goes into the workroom. Okay. There's a lot of empty shelves in here. Ah, here we are. Ludwig's journal number two. Oh, between the pages of this journal, there's a key. Tied to it reads, Master Bedroom Wardrobe. You know what? Before we go look in the wardrobe, let's read these journals. Today, we laid my father to rest in a mausoleum. It is a strange feeling knowing that his shell just lies there alone, and that at any time I could go look upon it, as if he were still there. Here, rather. Instead, I shall honour his wish, and begin the keeping of this journal. It's past time I did. He certainly prodded me into it for long enough. Should this first entry be a commemoration of my father's life? I lack the words to adequately describe him, I think. His achievements are familiar to most. Everyone knows the Clodovec trading company. There is little I could add, unless that would be of interest, I'm sure, coming from me. I can say, however, he shall be missed. We commend thee and lay thee to rest, Maximilian Clodovec. Father. 
hence the morning star. So although it's a year later, it's really just new year. It occurs to me for this journal to be of use of anyone. I should explain who I am. That would be of use to me. My name is Ludwig Clodovec. Now the Lord of Clo Clodovec Castle, I suppose. Lord of a trade route to nowhere. It barely entered my thoughts as a child, as I have no memory of living anywhere else, but our castle is truly remote. It was my father's grand project, a new trade route between Skyrim and Morrowind, administered by the Clodovec Company alone. A fool's project, is what they call it. How could it replace the Sea of Ghost routes, they would ask. What of the phenomenal expense in tunnelling under the mountains, said others, others. But father's plan was more simple. Why forge a new path when one can reclaim an old one? Tolvald's crossing was too dangerous, and too far south in any case. The mysterious tunnels that father set his mind and considerable fortune to, and he never did reveal how he knew of them, were not too far from the port in Windhelm. He knew no name for these tunnels, and since they went beneath the Velothi Mountains, he and all the workers came to simply call them the Velothi Tunnels. Clearing the way was dangerous, but the work involved was relatively slight. These tunnels emerged in a small valley high in the mountains, before plunging beneath the rocks again down to Morrowind. Clodovec Castle was built in this valley, a gatehouse in the centre of the would-be trade route. And that is how I grew up, observing the construction of our castle, watching and pestering the builders, stonecutters and carpenters and smiths. Tools and machines fascinated me, hammers and saws, pulleys and levers. I relished seeing the walls go up, the rooms take shape. Father was more keen on the furnishings. They had to match the latest fashions of faraway high rock. That was home to him, and to mother. I was too young to remember it well, but they are distinctive. Everything went wrong in the red year. Not merely for us, of course. It was the death of so very many. But that was when the tunnel down to Morrowind fell in, killing the workers inside. It was the end of father's grand project. Even if our route had survived, the people of Morrowind did not. There was no one left to trade with. Mother died not long after. Along with my sister who would have been. So much went wrong. The castle was nearly completed by then. And though again people called him mad, father elected to have it finished. Certainly, some things were cooled off and cut short. I think the armory was originally intended to be another grand entrance hall leading on to quarters for prestigious guests, a ballroom and such. But still, it became Clodovet Castle our home. My aunts and uncles always said that my father never recovered from those days. Why else would he choose to stay in the place that had come to represent his very dear failure? Father had founded it, but they took on the running of Clodovet Company from then on. My siblings mean to take up the business also, or so they informed me during their brief visit to inter our father. They may have been anxious to leave the castle once they were old enough. They could not stand the isolation but I, of course, remained here with father and the staff. I remember I was sorely disappointed when the last of the construction came to a close. Some of the carpenters and smiths had treated me almost as an apprentice, but they had to leave, and there was nothing more to do. Father had noted my interest in intricate me mechanics, though, and diverted them into a trade in intricate jewelries. It's not exactly what I wanted, but it suits me well enough, and I can labour at home in the castle. It is also very profitable. And there you have it, I suppose. Lord Ludwig Clodovec, the jeweller. So we're hearing about his interest in machines, but it doesn't seem there are any machines yet. Twelfth of last seed. Now that father is gone, they pester me to expand the mausoleum in readiness for my eventual passing. Next in line, next in line to die. Fine. I shall order the excavation. Rain's hand. Fourth era, 18. A year later. It is like turning over a rock and finding the twisting tunnels of an ant nest exposed to the sky. And yet here, the inhabitants did not scatter or erupt in a panic. They merely stood and stared with those red pinpricks for eyes. I should explain. In expanding the mausoleum, the workers broke through into some ancient catacombs of the Dwemer. They were beneath our feet, beneath the castle, all this time. Perhaps it should not be too surprising. The Velothi tunnels are home to some Dwemer ruins also. It is also strange, though. Where do I begin? 
I read about Dwemer and Amunculi, and all I could lay my hands on, as those were some of my favourites. But I've never seen any mention of what we found here. The workers called me down when they were about to breach the wall, and there we all stood, clustered around the hole. On the other side was our mirror image, a congregation of metal men staring back at us with their glowing red eyes. I was afraid. We all were. But while the workers all fled the mausoleum, I remained frozen in place. Expecting your imminent death is a significant shock, but an even greater surprise awaited me. A metal woman came forward and spoke. She spoke to me. At first her words were unrecognisable. Was it the Dwemer language? Then she spoke in Cyrodiilic. That was slow and halting. No harm, she said. I could manage no response. No harm, she said again. But this time, to the metal men and women behind her. Now she stands here in the study with me, reading books. I think she asked for them. I brought her here on the day of the breach, but I have forgotten what we spoke of. I said a lot in my panic, and she said very little. It all happened so quickly. Her brethren have all remained behind, down below. But she has not left the study. She's looking at me. Twelfth rain. Fourth era, 18. How many days later? Five days later. Her name is Lameshtu. Her progress in learning Cyrodiilic is astonishing. She read my books and listened to Conversation of the Staff, and already I can converse with her easily. The servants are not glad to have this audience, though. That much is clear. They are plainly afraid of what we have uncovered. But it is just as plain to me that these metal men mean us, well, no harm, as Lamashtu said. Lamashtu promised to show me Nurndural, for that is the name of the Dwemer catacombs beneath us. Actually, she said that she will have her, I suppose, brother Lahar show it to me. I think she wants to stay in the study. She says that she and her metal brethren are called the Gilded, but I am as yet unsure what they are exactly. Apparently, they've always been beneath our feet, and have never ventured out. They do resemble animunculi. That is all I can say. I realize more and more each day that the discovery of the Gilded is a monumental one, but Lamashtu has requested privacy. I'm not sure of her reasons, but I can certainly think of my own. Dwemer... Amunculi are known to be generally hostile and quite dangerous. I dread the thought of what might happen if some kind of military attention fell on them. The staff may spread tales. How could I stop them? But I've heard how they speak of this discovery. I doubt anyone will believe the particulars of their tales. They will be thought of as just that. Tales. The resources to be found in Nurndural are beyond my ability to count or really value. In particular, that wonderful metal, that famous Dwemer metal that co confounds all who try to unlock the secrets of its fabrication. I did put the question to Lamashtu, but I am no smith or alchemist, is all she would say. She has answered many of my questions about the truly amazing machines down there, though I can barely sleep. It feels like my mind is on fire with possibilities. Lahar is taking to his new job well, too. After showing me some of Nundurel, he followed me back to the castle. I didn't mind. Even to begin with, he was almost as well-spoken as Lamashtu. I think she may have been teaching him, or perhaps he already knew. Much like Lamashtu had, Lahar began to follow the staff and observe their work. To their visible chagrin. Before long, he expressed an interest in taking up the role of a caretaker of the castle. Already he is invaluable. He is careful, quick, and most remarkably, does not appear to need or want for sleep. My studies of Nundarel's machines consume my attention, as do my plans regarding what I learn from them. I look to the Malashtu as a representative of that domain and of her kind. Besides Lahar, who is agreeable, if simple, she is the only one able or perhaps willing to speak with me. The others merely stare as I pass and ignore my attempts at conversation. I asked her permission to salvage what scraps of metal could be found lying broken and useless in the halls of Nundarel for my use in my own works. However, her impassive manner, she did agree. This is tremendously exciting. The metal can be melted down and reshaped as I desire, and there is so much of it to be had. I go to work. The mausoleum has become a thoroughfare. Metal warp scraps and whole pieces both is carted out of the Nurendal and into the workroom by small groups of gilded. 
There the casting molds await. Things are taking shape. The staff are all leaving. This has been building for some time. It's their fear of the Gilded. More and more of their number have effectively taken up residence in the castle. As they help with my work, as with Lamashtu and Laha, they also took to observing the staff in their daily tasks. Never speaking, just watching. I think it all became too much. Perhaps it's for the best. I'm told that the company is not doing well. Less money is coming in. In truth, it is a relief. I never know what to say to them anyway. Even to Annalise. She was always kind to me. She actually asked me to leave as well. That's not something I could do though, especially not now. I could have sworn that she looked disappointed. It would be nice to think of why that might be, but that can't be it. It must just be my imagination. Oh, you poor fool. Still, it is sad to think that I will likely not see her again. In any case, Lamashtu was quick to point out that the staff are not even truly required any longer. Not with her brethren being here and able to take up the work. Today, I offered to pay them all a wage for this work, but Lamashtu declined, saying that all they needed was something to occupy them. Laha echoed this sentiment. I suppose I will have to take them at their word. None of their brethren will speak to me after all. A year later, behold, the common tap or spigot, the pipes of cast metal to ferry the water, the appropriated Dwemer pump, and the steam to make it go. Steam, steam under pressure, it makes it all go. Now I have water at the turn of a tap, heated water even. That Dwemer boiler was perfect for the task. Today I have heard, oh then this is an extra year later. Okay, time's passing quite quickly now. Oh no, hang on a minute. So the staff all left, and then two years later, they had running water. And a year after that, today I've heard that Clodovec Trading Company is no more. By accounts, it was in a slow decline since the Red Year and Mother's death. But now, it has finally happened. We all have our share of the remaining wealth, and it is not insubstantial. I do not have to worry for myself or my remaining family. Indeed, I've continued my jewellery business all this time even overseeing some of the gilded and creating additional pieces. Some things need to be arranged, but overall, this is nothing to fret over. Things here won't change. I can't abide first-time meetings. Can anyone? No one knows what to say to one another. Who are you, they would say. What is it that you do? By which, of course, they mean, please describe your quantifiable worth to society in a short sentence. That's a little extreme. People are curious. They want to they get to know you. You know, what is it you do? For example, it's not like, describe your quantifiable worth. It's simply, you know, what is it you occupy your time with? You know, what's your job? What are your hobbies? What are your interests? Who are you as a person? I got a little bit distracted there. Father's beautiful glass garden, perched atop the castle, never did function as he wanted. It would never hold the warmth the plants needed. It all leached out into the frigid mountain air and the plants froze and died. Now that I can tap into some that seemingless endless supply of pressurized steam produced by some unknown means deep in Nurnderal, the glass garden is finally as warm and vaporous as I could ever want. An amazing discovery today, though. I would not have known it if it wasn't for Lamashtu. In excavating a new room for the cellar, the workers struck what appears, by its curve, to be a great metal sphere. Dwemer metal. Like everything down there. But unlike any of the items of Dwemer manufacture I have yet seen. The Mashdu came to look at it, and it seems that she recognizes it. After some thought, she said that it had been called a machine for far walking without steps. A rough translation, I think. I am simply calling it the travel machine for now, as that is apparently what it is for. Teleporting one to a far off location and back again. Tele- Okay, that explains why it's a weird little hole in the floor. It's a teleportation device. That's kind of frightening. I don't think I fancy teleporting. She speaks of it as if of a barely remembered thing from one's childhood. But Lamashtu tells me that a machine is like a crossroad with paths striking out in many directions from it. And the end of each road is a terminus. And this is where one would appear upon entering the travel machine here. Similarly... Entering a Terminus machine would bring one back here. A Terminus machine? I've asked the workers to uncover the sphere in its entirety. 
This is very exciting. The travel machine is to be... Oh, that's two years late. Oh, no, hang on a minute. Right, two years after the greenhouse, they discover the sphere. The travel machine is to be my own grand project. Quite early on, we found a kind of panel on its surface that could be removed. Behind it were etched a series of pictographs that Lamastu aided me in deciphering. We've concluded that to give instructions in the assembly and operation of the machine. The work required is lengthy and arduous. It would be impossible were the gilded not here to help me. A large chamber to house it must be dug out and supported with stonework. The machine itself has been buried in the dirt for a l who knows how long. Excavation continues, but it is painstaking. After that, it must be raised up, righted, supported in place. It must be cleaned thoroughly, inside and out. Broken pieces must be replaced, or recast and replaced. It is to require an extraordinary amount of piping. There is a lot going unused down in Nundural, but will it be enough? I expect this to take years, but it is the power of teleportation, and not just in the hands of powerful mages. It is hard to imagine what a boon it would have been to the Clodovet company had it not closed its doors. A year after. Work on a travel machine continues. In the meantime, I've been inspired by the idea of the travel machine to create my own structure that facilitates fast transportation of items across the castle. It relies on the principles of pneumatic pressure to propel items through pipes that have been laid beneath the floors and behind the walls. My first practical test was a pipe that ran between a terminal in the kitchen and one in my bedroom. It worked much as I expected, though the first attempts were messy. What were you trying to transport? Food? Tea? Oh, don't tell me it was tea or coffee. That would be a right mess. I shall expand this structure of pipes throughout the castle. It will be more disruptive than the gas lights were, as the pipes are much larger, but worth it in the end, I feel. Funny thing, also, I've heard that people... Rather than Clodovet Castle, people have come to call my home Clockwork Castle, for all the machinery here. It's a fitting name, I think. I like it. Ooh, this is a... been a while since the last entry, six years. I am frustrated by the interminable work required by the travel machine. So much work, yet so little to occupy my time. I simply lack the strength of the Gilded, for now there is nothing I can help with. To alleviate my boredom, I recently began work on a method for controlling the machine. It is something I've given a lot of thought to. How to inform the machine where I want to go. I am sculpting what will become a cast metal relief map of Skyrim. Only Skyrim. Lamashtu assures me that it could not take one anywhere else. Once cast, I will affix mechanical buttons to it in the places on the map that the machine can take me. It shall be beautiful. I certainly have the time to make it so. Why can it only go to Skyrim, I wonder? Is it because of the Dwemer ruins around Skyrim? Are they somehow linked to that? Two years later. Today, one of the gilded workers struck me as we were working on the travel machine. It had been giving me odd looks all morning, so I kept my eye on him in turn and saw the blow coming in time to mostly evade him. He still caught me on the arm and knocked me to the floor raising a nasty bruise. He stood above me, silent all the while, and for a moment, I feared for my life. Fortunately, I then heard Lahar rounding the corner and looked to him for help. But now, it was Lahar looking at me oddly, sprawled on the floor, as the worker had already turned back to his task, as if nothing was amiss. Still, I had to tell Lahar what had happened. I hardly feel safe around the Gilded these days. He said a, s a soft something to the worker that I didn't catch, and my assailant left for Nurnderal without a word, later to be replaced by a different gilded. I am thankful that the machine is nearly finished. Another year later. It is like turning a musical instrument. It is like tuning a musical instrument. Fine adjustments until the right tone is struck and a travel machine stirs to life, a bright blue portal shining in its heart. This is how we find where the thing can take us. Which terminus machines out there yet function? I was reluctant to go through the shimmering portal. How could we truly know where it led? Or even if one would arrive with both life and limbs intact? What if an unfriendly person awaited on the other side? Lahar did not seem to share my concerns, however, and strolled through the portal before I knew he intended. 
He was gone so long that I thought him lost. And when he returned, he was caked in dirt, as if he had dug his way out of a grave. I saw the banners of Whiterun, he said to me. The caravan brings us mead from there. The caravan? Oh, the caravan that was visiting at the time. I marked down the tuning, and we moved to the next. Lahar went fearlessly into the portal again and again. Though, now I made him cover his metal body with what clothes would fit. He would be a strange sight indeed to anyone that might see him. Today, I took my first steps outside the Clockwork Castle in over a decade. How is it that so much time has passed? It was well outside the castle too. The travel machine works. I stood outside Markarth Clockwork Terminus for several minutes watching the crowds across the river entering and leaving the city. So many people. And that was enough for me. I returned to make this entry. There were long years in which I thought this day would never come, but now it is here. The machine works. Now, there is no more need for the caravans to make the trip through the Velocity Tunnels delivering my supplies. Lahas has said he will do it instead, using the travel machine. Two years later. This morning, I awoke to find all the Gilded, excepting Lamashtu and Lahar, had left during the night. Laha says they have all returned to Nurnderal. To be honest, I am relieved. I was beginning to feel like a prisoner in my own home. I dare not enter a room if one of the workers was in there, doing their chores. I don't know how to properly describe it, but for some time now, they have exuded such a sense of menace that I feel in danger around them. Fortunately, Clockwork Castle has earned its name. With all the work I've done here, all the labor-saving machines, the workers are no longer needed. Laha is more than enough. After all, there is no great entourage here to feed and clothe. No mothers, fathers, children and dogs. There is just me. Only me. Well... I do kind of want to finish in the s exploring the study, but I also want to go and find the final part of the of his journal. Does this... Oh, this goes up into the glass garden. You know what? Let's explore. Let's go up. Oh, it... Hmm. It is cold. The greenhouse clearly is not functional right now, but... It's, it's a decent size. Gotta give it that. Oh. Right, still got running water. I, before I go see Lamashtu, I reckon I'm gonna have a lot of questions for Lamashtu. Let's take another way around. I assume she's still on top of the building overlooking well. Whatever it is she's overlooking. I want to find that final journal. A locked wardrobe. Did I never notice that this... No, it's not that wardrobe. This wardrobe? Requires a key. Interesting. Bye. That is a barricade. Oh, not a great barricade, but somebody, possibly Ludwig. Oh, hello. Guess you want to have a chat. What are you doing? Well, I can see your body over there. I reckon that's probably your former master. That must be Ludwig. He used to live here with us. I had not spoken to him for a long time. 
Uh huh. I suppose he must have died in there. How? Why is he still in here? Why would he hide from you? I forgot about death. It was a long time ago for me. You forgot about... Hang wait. Okay, you forgot about death. It was a long time ago for you. You used to l be alive. Like, properly alive. Not an automaton. You used to live. I am nearly 4,000 years old. For me, time is difficult. Men and men are victims of time, whereas I... I turn for a moment to ponder, and when I turn back... You're all dead. That's a long time to ponder. I wonder what you're pondering. And... Well, Ludwig. How long ago did you turn your back on him? Towards the end, Ludwig shut himself away and would see no one. Items such as food and books were sent up using the pneumatic tube system. For a time, Lachar continued to deliver his food and the food was eaten. I believe now that the vermin began to eat the food once Ludwig stopped. And... Well, what what now? Did he ever finish that mausoleum for his own demise? Caretaking is Lachar's sole interest. You should ask him. And what's your interest? You're still here. Yes. I am. Oh, Ludwig, you should have left. Sun's height, Fort Sierra 37. An awful realization has been in my thoughts lately, or rather than a realization, a question. If I were to die, say of some accident in the workroom, how long would it be until I was found? The answer, I think, is that the longer I stay here out of the world, the more any knowledge of, or memory of me will fade from those out there. And the longer it would be until I was found, tending towards infinity. It's almost mathematical. Seven years later. It occurs to me that I'm so accustomed to the useful machines in Clockwork Castle that I can scarcely imagine life without them. And yet, do devices like these exist anywhere else? They can improve the lives of others too, but would anyone accept them? What real use would these contraptions be, they would ask? Or how could we possibly afford to build such extravagances? And yet I spend all my days in the workroom, crafting machines and objects of utility and beauty. Perhaps one day, when I've done enough, when I'm finished, I can show it all to someone. Nine years later. I cannot remember the last time I actually spoke aloud. Once there was so much to say, so much to learn from Lamashtu, and so much to organize with Laha. Now though, everything is settled. Every moment runs into the next with the precision and predictability of a perfect machine. Every day is the same. There is nothing more to say. When was the last time I spoke to someone from outside the castle? Someone not made of metal? It must have been around when the travel machine was completed. Has it really been so long? I don't know what I could... I don't know that I could raise my voice anymore. Not even to save my life. I don't want it to be heard. Another year later. They're warm to the touch, aren't they? Am I not warm? Lamashtu? Laha? The lady in the walls. They are all so cold. The lady in the walls. Okay, six years after that. Clocks driven by soul gems. Marking time for an eternity. Are they aware? What do they see with no eyes? What do they feel with no skin? It's beginning to question the gilded. This isn't about the machines. This is about them, the gilded. A further eight years later? 
Does the mind require other minds to inform its thoughts? Do they otherwise reflect back uselessly and endlessly unchanged? An echo chamber? But I say nothing. Can I still speak? I dare not speak. Five years later. I do nothing but sit here in this chamber. The cobwebs growing around me. The dust staining my skin. I could not bear their eyes upon me and the weight of the judgment behind those eyes would be too much as well. I think I shall simply stay here instead. There is a feeling rising in me that my time here is growing short. It is obvious to me that I should note down my last will, but then there is no one to give it, all to, and I have nothing to offer in any case. Who would want what I have? I don't want to reflect on my life. It was no good really. It's no good. Surely, it was better than nothing. I need to go inform Lahar. And hopefully, he will put Ludwig to rest. This must have been his own little private workshop. It's in the wardrobe. Nothing of note. It really seems to me that those books he had piled up behind this false back panel were like some kind of flimsy barricade. Right, laha. Where are you? What? Time are we on? It's dark outside now. Let's try Clockwork Castle Armory. Well, this should lead to Nunderal, shouldn't it? Because this is where the mausoleum was going to be. Was it? Or. Oh, I can't remember. Right, they're just mannequins. For a moment, I, I had a little panic because still a little shaken from all the skeletons. Dim in here. Hello? Laha? Honestly, I really don't think I would want to live here. It's... Other than the, you know, all the horrors. That's a glass arrow. I take that for luck. Other than all the horrors I experienced on the way up here, and being still so close to them. I... Honestly don't think I would want to be this isolated. So far from everyone else. Right, Laha is definitely not in here. This is a... Well, I can see why this is going to be a grand entrance hall of its own into, like, a ballroom and such. Look at it. It's it's like the entrance to the manor replicated. Laha? Imagine that leads back upstairs. Ah, there you are, Laha. Is there anything I can do to help? I. Yes. I shall endeavour to help. I can't inform you about Ludwig. I'll find you if you need something. Uh, why don't you want to listen about Ludwig? Ah, oh, clever. Okay, so it just blows cold mountain air into this one room. So I can make a cooler. That's that's clever. Simple but intuitive. I think then we should go have a word with 
Lamash do? Whomever she really is. Still up here. Got my sword. Sword is close. You're still here. I am still here. Let's we'll come back to the topic of um of La of Ludwig. The reason I'm still here is the steam pipe powering your travel machine is broken. I see. So the travel machine isn't working. Yes. Then you can stay. I don't want to stay. I, I don't want to stay here in the castle. It is simple. You are trapped here. Therefore you cannot leave here. Therefore you must live here. But Lahar said to ask you for the key to the mausoleum. Yes, I had him give me the key. Lahar can be simple. If he had decided to go back down there and try to fix the pipeline again, he might not have returned. Okay, so you do care about Lahar then. But could I have the key? You wish to try to fix the pipeline yourself. Very well. Here. Thank you. I do have a lot of questions. I may have answers. Okay. Well, <clears throat> first things first. In, I asked this of Lahar, but what are you? I am a machine of bone and metal. I can see that. Does that make you undead? I am a machine. I am made of bone and metal. So you don't really know. Were you once a Dwemer? Somewhat. Can you tell me anything about the Dwemer then? Very well. Why does it look like you're smiling at me after doing that? I, I I don't know Dwemer. I didn't say in Dwemer. I said of the Dwemer. Not not of the language. No, you wouldn't. Alright, don't be a smart ass. The reason I'm not trying to go back through the tunnels, other than they're collapsed, is there was a strange ghost lady following me in there, and she was terrifying. Ghosts are not particularly unusual. They are a recognized phenomenon. Yes, but this one was different. Something was unusual about this one. How so? Well, it... It followed me for a long while. It didn't do very much else, but being near it hurts terribly. I see. And again, it followed me for a long, long while. I see. And it, it made a strange wailing sound. I know it, it really sounds like I'm not describing anything other than a normal ghost. A sound. I see. Right, you don't really care. Very well. So, I've been reading Ludwig's journals. Why is it that only you and Lahar live here? Clockwork Castle has been cut off from the outside world for well over a hundred years. I meant more... Until you came along, that is. Yeah, I meant more... Of course, the destruction left in your wake means that once again, no one is going to find this place. You, you said that in an almost like you were accusing me of causing all that destruction. Look, I didn't cause the destruction. I was simply the unfortunate one caught up in the destruction. It was terrifying. I was going to die numerous times. Still worried about that. I, I meant more about your so-called brothers and sisters, the Gilded. Why, why are you the only ones living here when they're all down there, I suppose? We are the Gilded. He means the rest of our kind, down in Erndural. Though we may all look the same, we are not. Okay, what do you mean by that? 
three children wrote their names upon the world. The first plunged it into the dirt. The second carved into the flesh of a tree. The third chipped into solid stone. Thus they recorded their memory upon the world. The first child's name was washed away with the first rain. The second child's name grew and distorted with the tree until it died. The memory survives, but twisted almost beyond recognition. The third child's name remains unchanged for as long as the stone endures. The gilded down below are the first children. Lahar is a second child. I am the third. Okay, so... You are the youngest, then. But the most sophisticated. That's what I'm getting. So the gilded down in Nurnjural, they have lost their memories. Lahar has retained his memories, but they are changed and different. They're warped, as you say, beyond recognition. And you remember for as long as you endure. Your voice is quite unusual. I don't really know what I'm going to gain from saying this. Of course it's unusual. I have no mouth, no lips, no tongue and no throat. My heart shivers in my chest and words are produced from my speaker horn. Your heart shivers or vibrates. Oh, I've got the key. Thank you. Very well. That is all, then. So... Heart. Is that an actual heart in there? Or is that a gem? It might be a gem. I hope it's a gem. Okay. I... need to sleep. At the very least, I don't believe... Laha or Lamashtu mean me harm. I don't think they were responsible for Ludwig's death. However, the isolation, the paranoia, clearly got to him. If I don't leave this place, the same will happen to me. So tomorrow, I need to go down into Nurnderal and fix the pipes, get the machine running, before I run out of water and food. And I suppose this is as clean a bed as any. It feels a little morbid, sleeping across from Ludwig. You know what? There's living quarters. Let's have a look. If there are clean beds in here, I might prefer to sleep in the living quarters and mm, I mean it all looks nice enough but I don't think these beds are intended for me I just get a feel ah here we are you know what this I think this is going to be my room for the night Big old bathtub. Oh, a massive old kitchen. How far does this go? This is... What? How? Okay, right. This is definitely the servant quarters at one point, but... How many servants exactly were here? Too many. That's how many. Right. I'm taking that other bedroom with the double bed. I'm going to bed down for the night. And as I say, we already have our plan for the morning. Are these toilets in the same room? Oh, you know what? Don't question it. We're not going to be here long, hopefully. Hopefully.